a solo to Yes's owner of a lonely heart, Trevor Rabin on guitar. Uh, yeah, it's not my hero, Steve Howe. I thought I'd do it anyway, though, because it's got a really cool effect, and it's a pretty neat solo. Um, so uh, I thought I'd celebrate the first snowfall of spring by doing that one. So <coughs> let's check it out. Okay, see you in just a second. Well, hey, gang. Let's go over this note for note. But before we do, let's, let's really go over the sound here because this is crucial. First of all, you do need a guitar with 22 frets. Uh, it's going to really help because there's a bend on the 22nd fret. Uh, you can obviously have more than 22 frets. If you've got your Paul Reed Smith out, it's got 24. Yeah, that's fine. All right. Uh, but you need 22. All right. Um, second thing is, uh, let's talk about the sound. Now, the key thing is there's an effect in here that's known as a harmonizer or pitch shifter. And what that does is it takes one note. Let's, let's say this G here on the second string, eighth fret, and it plays another note that's a specified number of degrees above it, or a specified number of frets above it. So when we play this G, we're also going to get a number above it. And I've set it at seven, so that'd be one. That's seven uh, frets above it, that's a D. So it's kind of like when I play that one note, this. Um, my guitar is going to play two notes. That. Now let's check it out. Now I'm going to put the pitch shifter on. You'll see what I mean. And the nice thing about it is once I have that in, I can play it pretty quickly. I don't have to have two guitars that are doing different things. All right, so we're just going to learn one set of those with a pitch shifter set at seven degrees above the note that you're playing. All right, so you want it shifted seven. So when I play this, I get two notes. I get the G and the D. All right. Second thing is to get that sound, you need a real tight distortion. Uh, I'm using a late uh, 80s Marshall uh, modeler to get that. All right, you want it pretty tight and uh, high gain. All right, so here we go. Uh, let's learn the first part first, okay? So here's the first part. Okay, very straightforward. This song, um, this right here, that's over an A chord, and then that's a D, and then a G. So that's a perfect um, set of chords to play a A minor pentatonic over. That's going to work really well. So that's what we're going to use uh, here is that A minor pentatonic. All the notes are going to come out of that. All right, so let's start. Um, the first one we're going to do is we're going to take this on the, the second string that uh, on the eighth fret. We're going to bend it up a whole step. Then bring it down to just the, the eighth and uh, cut it off. All right. The next part, what I do is there's a bit of a noisy part, and so I slide down to the seventh on the fifth fret, and then I play. Uh, <clears throat> I'm sorry, to the, on, on the fifth string, I bring it down to the seventh, and immediately play that lick right. Here. And that is uh, on the fourth string, five seven. You hammer on, and then play the five on the third, and give it a little vibrato and then play the seventh on the fourth. All right, and then we're going to play five, hammer on very quickly to the seventh on the third. Give it a little vibrato if you want. <laughs> don't, don't keep hammering it on like I just did. All right, so if that's the whole thing, let's hear it again. Next part is we're going to uh, bend on the tenth on the first string. All right, so that's this part right here. We're bending on the tenth string, bend up a hole, and you kind of bend it slowly. And then you'll play the eighth on the first string and then the tenth and give that a lot of vibrato. Here's the 22nd, and 
bend it up a whole step and give that vibrato. Now on the album, he just lets that sucker go forever. So if you have something that can increase your sustain even more, just do that and hold it. All right, hold it until the next line. Uh, now I play a little filler in between the next line, and this is actually played by a different guitar. Um, but I play it anyway on, on this because it just helps fill out the solo, I'm usually playing by myself anyway, or with only one guitar. So uh, this is just on the second fret, on second string we're playing 15, 13, and on the third string we're playing uh, 14. And give it like a little quarter bend each time. Okay, so here's the next line. that in chunks. Alright? Uh, Alright, so that one is, um, you'll play uh, on the fifth string, you're going to play that G on the tenth fret, and on the fourth string you play seven, and bend up on the ninth, and just bend it up a whole, uh, I'm sorry, a half step, and then pull it off to the seventh. Alright, so like so. Alright, now that can also be played on the third string by playing open and second, fourth, bend up a half and then pull off to the second. So those are equivalent, okay? I like doing everything in the eighth, ninth, seventh positions here. So I'm not moving all around uh, with my left hand. So that's why I do it that way. If you like how the other sounds, use it, okay? Alright, here's the next part. So this one is, you're playing on the first string, you're playing the eighth, and quickly playing the tenth on the second string, and then eighth, and then eighth and hammer on the tenth. All right. Yes, on the record he may have played a pull-off from the eighth to the fifth instead of playing eighth to tenth on the second. Whatever. If you want to do it that way, by all means, go ahead and do it that way. If that, whatever floats your boat. Okay, um, the distortion and the effects take over so much on this that the uh, um, the timing is really key. But but the uh, the um, that I don't know if it helps you a little bit. Maybe it sounds a little bit better. Anyway, do it if you want. Okay, so that's it. All right, so here's the next line. And that is playing the eighth on the first, bending up slowly, basically a whole step, and then playing the tenth, eighth, and then tenth on the second, and ninth on the third. So it sounds like this. Then you're going to grab on the tenth on the fifth string and pull up a whole step. Take that slow and then hold it when you get to that, that whole step. All right. The next thing you're going to do is this, is this line. And that is simply 10th um, on the second. And then on the third, you will play um, the ninth and the twelfth and back up to the tenth on the second. And then you're going to play the uh, <clears throat> the twelfth on the third, and bend it up a couple times. I guess three. One, two, three. Three. I don't know how to count. Four. Okay, let's play that last part now. Let's learn that last part. All right, now. <laughs> um, to understand this, I think, a little bit easy, more easily, um, I'm going to take off the pitch shift. And uh, the first thing to note is that this is basically just a lick that's in your good old blues box in A. 
and we're just going to drag that up uh, a whole octave to get to the 17th fret, okay? So now I've taken off the distortion, and um, so here's basically uh, the first line. We're going to start on the 20th uh, on the second string, bend that up a whole step, play the 17th back to the 20th, and then we're going to play the following, 17th, um, we're going to play the following. And that is 17th, 20th, 19th, and then this roll right here, 20th, 19th, 17th, 20th on the second. Okay, that's that part. And then he kind of accelerates. This is a part I'm not sure I have 100% correct, but... Okay, so it's, it's 17th on the first, 20th on the second, and then 17th, 20th, and pull off to the 17th and play the 19th on the on the third, like so. And then we'll play the 17th on the second, 19th on the third, and then play this hammer on and pull off again, 17th, 19th, pull off to the 17th and 19th on the fourth. Okay, and then play the 19th on the 3rd, 19th on the 4th, and play the 17th, bend it up about a half step, okay? That's a typical maneuver. Oops. Alright, and that's that. Okay, gang, hope you enjoyed that one, and we'll see you on down the road.